Hey guys, John here. Today's patch in GMS is called Pluck of Ice, and this was kind of inspired. Obviously, it's winter, it's cold, there's snow out there and all that. So with that kind of being said, it's kind of like imagine there's some type of pluck that sounds kind of cold, kind of icy. You're embarking on a journey in, in this frozen tundra or something like that and cavernous igloos. I have no idea, but something around that line. So with that being said, this was kind of constructed upon that. And this is also going to be using the arpeggiator within the fruity wrapper. So we'll get, we'll get, get to that in just a moment. So this is what the patch sounds like. Right, that was the pluck of ice. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So diving into this patch here, let's take a look and see what's happening. So it's basically going to be this arpeggiator sound. You can really play some mysterious kind of things, you know? So diving into this, we have the first waveform called troll, which is, it should have been like an ice troll, uh, really. So whatever, I'll settle with troll, that's fine. The pitch is gonna be zero, fine zero, and the next one's gonna be square retro. I find that one actually really cool as opposed to just the square wave. The retro waveforms are actually really cool to play around with. So with that being said, this is oscillator number two. It's gonna be up one octave, so 12 semitones, and the mix is going to be 50. So 50% one, 50% two. We're skipping over to number three, we don't have to worry about this one, and we're gonna be using some noise at 23%. Noise is kind of one of those things where it should just be kind of maybe a little noticeable and it kind of just adds a little bit of that characteristic to it, almost that kind of real feeling to it, because that's what the old stuff did sound like. So, yeah, that's kind of why it's always been uh, there in soft synths. So moving on from there, I did want to mention that oscillator number two is going to be inverted. This button's kind of hard to see, but it's basically inverting the waveform. And sometimes if, if it sounds weird or something like that, you can always do the invert and kind of see the difference of how it sounds. So I left this one on because I felt like it sounded a little bit better. So yeah, unison, we're going to be using four voices, so really not that much. You don't always have to crank it to bam, 16, now, and now the patch is great. Like, you can experiment with different voices. Like, you don't always have to go to the max if, if you find yourself doing something like that. With a stereo, it's going to be 0.47 because this is more so a lead. So it kind of should be a little bit more focused on the center because it's kind of, uh, I guess, lead. Yeah, it shouldn't be really be like spread way outward like pads and kind of other stuff are, are at. Now for the detune, it's gonna be at 0.25, and for the octave, it's gonna be up one over here on the keyboard. It's also gonna be mono voice because I felt like something like this, it shouldn't necessarily be like a chordal type of sound. So by clicking mono voice, you can mono voice, you can really only hit one note at a time. And while that sounds limiting, limiting, it kind of helps the patch. I don't know, I, I felt like it's a mono patch in that sense. So yeah, monophonic right here, click that and make sure that is on. You can change it if you want to do chords, but I think this one is better with this on here. Now moving on from this section over here, the filter is going to be low pass, cutoff is going to be at the top, but okay, we don't have anything modulating right there. Let's see over here, we don't hear, yeah, so no need for the filter here, so we can skip over the filter, we can skip over the envelope as we see this amount knob is all the way to the bottom. Now for LFO 1 and 2, the amount's at the bottom, so we don't have to worry about that. So easy peasy, skip over these whole three sections like they're not even there. Now for the contour of this actual sound. So the attack is 0.6, the sustain, and I'm skipping over delay or decay for now, sustain is all the way at the bottom, and that's because this is kind of a pluck, right? So we want to hit the note, and it should be gone pretty quick. So that's why the sustain is all the way at the bottom. There should be no sustained level when we hold the note. Now the decay is going to be 0.34. Now this is going to be determining how quick this sound is going to decay from once we hit the note. And then the release is all the way at the bottom. So... For example, if I turn off this arpeggiator here and holding down this note, this echo here is a little confusing. That's probably my other echo or delay actually. But yeah, basically once you hit this note, it should decay pretty quick. That's the whole concept of plucks. You know, you want to hit the note, it should be there and it should be gone. Bada bing, bada boom, moving on from there. So yeah, we're not gonna be using any frequency slide or panning or anything like that. The output is gonna be at 
3.4, so I kind of had to boost that just a little bit. The only really stuff we have glued is going to be a little bit of flanger, and this dot's kind of in the middle, which just which pretty much means these knobs here are going to be at noon. This is going to be glued, so this amount here is going to be 0.5, so we're not, it, that's in the middle, so we're not doing any positive or negative modulation, so don't worry about this section over here. Moving on to our echo, also known as delay. Since this is a little bit out of the bullseye, we notice that this feedback is going to be at 0.36 and the filter is at 0.35. This is glued and also here on the modulation is at 0.5, so we're not using this. So really we're just using some delay and some flanging for this patch here. And you can use this totally without the arpeggiator, but I think the arpeggiator is kind of nice to have in there if you want to do something kind of like that. So with that being said, let's dive into the arpeggiator. Click this little wrench or I guess or a gear, Jesus Christ, gear, the screen little gear over here. And I have this always on range two. I always think a range two sounds a little bit better. Range three is kind of extreme, but it can be cool for some stuff. So playing around with these different values, so ascending notes, descending notes, up and down, and the sticky version, it's kind of cool to play around with the different ones. I first started with up and I was like, okay, maybe let's try down. Down sounded pretty good. Up and down also sounds pretty good. So it's kind of really up to you, whichever way you want to go. So I'll select down for now. So if I play something, you can see these notes are going to be descending downwards. Or if I went upwards, it's going to go upwards. So I think you get the point of that. So for this patch, I kind of left it on downwards here. And yeah, that's pretty much how this one was made. So let's hop into the channel strip over here. So for this, I have some fruity balance. And over here, I just kind of automated the the intro. So I didn't want to just bam, start off right at the at the top, you know. So we have this nice grungy, dark, ominous kind of sound to kind of set the stage a little bit. And then the pluck arpeggiator kind of comes in slowly. And then bam, it's in by bar three. With a little bit of uh, kind of curve here for the attack of this uh, of this fruity balance, which not to mention, if you watch any other videos of mine, it's always generally a good idea instead of automating these faders and having them dance on you that looks kind of dumb. Actually, put a fruity balance on the insert and automate this knob right here. And the reason I say that is because let's say you're automating your fader and like, oh, this is really cool. My session looks cool. They're all bouncing and stuff like that. And then you're like, oh, I need this is too loud. I need to turn this down. And you turn it down, and then your faders keep bouncing at you, and it's kind of just rubbing it in your face. You know what I mean? That's kind of a problem. You're painting yourself into a corner. So with that being said, automate this fruity balance here, and then you can kind of go crazy with the automation and have this fader be an overall master control of that main volume because that's kind of how it should be. You shouldn't have to be automating this fader. And uh, there's another video I did called uh, how to automate vocals or automate like this. And it's kind of using this technique with a little bit more in depth as far as like setting a range for this volume here. So you can actually basically set this range for this automation curve to be like minus 10 dB and plus 4 dB or whatever you feel is right for you. So you don't have to have such a huge handle to move that with. So I thought I'd mention that while we're here talking about this volume automation right over here. So with that being said, I have a little bit of ozone compression here on the uh, on this pluck because some of these notes can kind of point out or poke out to you a little bit too much. So you kind of want to control them dynamically so they kind of sit in one spot comfortably. Because they shouldn't really have low dynamics, high dynamics, low dynamics. They should kind of just be kind of even for sounds like this. Now, with that being said, this for effects is going to, going to go to three here. So it's going to be going to this Valhalla Vintage Verb, which is kind of a staple for a lot of my stuff. And I'm cutting off a little bit of the lows and cutting off a little bit of the highs for the EQ on, on the uh, Vintage Verb. But I'm also setting these to delay four and delay eight, which is basically just fruity delay three. And we can look at the time over here at two, and then we can look over here, and this is gonna be at a different value over here, so four. So basically, two different delays, so you can have two different timings. It's kind of nice to have them conveniently there. And also, once we select these delays here, these are also gonna be sent to the reverb. So we have our main signal getting sent to the reverb. They're getting sent to two different delays, and those two different delays are also getting sent to our main reverb. So it kind of makes the delays fit into the whole scheme of the whole, uh, of the whole song thing. So yeah, that's kind of really uh, how everything is put together here with just some extra sound, some bass, and yeah. So with that being said, uh, yeah, let's uh, play us out with Pluck of Ice. And as before, always save the file. I always save these files here in the save presets, so I'm not going to be saving them in this whole interface here. So yeah, here we go. And let's play us out with Pluck of Ice.
All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.